you want to make sure and alternate your nail pattern so you don't hit your nails on the board below. Here you can see I'm driving in nails. These will be on the bottom side of your boards to act as spikes to help with stability. With regard to cutting your boards for your stand, you would like to put the first board at whatever length the bottom of the cant is, and then the next board you would cut two inches longer than the first, and then again for the third, two inches longer than the second. Once you've made your stand, you can turn your cant over, and make sure it's stable enough for a safe chop. With marking the cant, you want to choose the best place on the cant to cut. Uh, so you want to look for a area with no knots. Once you've found the area you would like to cut on the cant, you then mark your center line. As you can see here, I'm opening up the top of my cut to two inches to prevent pinching. Once you have marked the top of your cant at whatever spacing you'd like, you measure the diameter of the cant, and for example, this one was a 10 inch cant, and then you will open up your cut one inch, and you will have one extra inch on your strong side, which I'm right handed, so that would be my right side, and then one inch less on your left side. So on this particular cant, I would mark six inches from my center cut on my right side and five inches from my center cut on my left side and I would repeat that on both sides. Once you have found how wide you want your cut to be you then can draw your lines on both faces of the cant so you can follow your lines easier. Once you've drawn your vertical lines you can tie them in to your top center point and that again just allows you to follow your lines better. Tying your vertical lines in with your center notch allows you to see when is the right time to turn to the next side. There's two different kinds of safety footwear that you can use. One is chain mail, it goes underneath your shoes and it allows for better mobility. The second kind of footwear you can use are called tin mans, and although they hinder your mobility a little more than chain mail, they provide a little bit better protection from the axe. You want to make sure you keep a sheath on your axe at all times until time to cut. You want to also make sure that your axe head is pinned with a metal dowel through the handle of the axe. You also want to make sure that your wooden wedge on the top of your axe is secure. You want to make sure before you start chopping that your overhead is free of any objects. You want to make sure that you're following your lines with your axe head and you have your angles right. You want to make sure that your feet are parallel with the line that you're cutting. You also want to have a narrow stance to increase accuracy. A wider stance decreases accuracy. You want to align the axe with the center of your body when you're swinging. This increases accuracy and balance. As you can see here, this is an example of an over-the-shoulder swing and this decreases accuracy. There are several cutting patterns you can use, such as top, bottom, bottom, top, 
or bottom top, top bottom. I prefer bottom top, bottom top. If you stick the axe, your first instinct is to pull away from the cant with the axe handle. But the best way to do it is to drive the end of the axe handle closest to your body towards the middle of the cant. Once you have cut through to the center line of your first side, you want to set your drivers, which are one to two hard swings to try and crack the other side of the wood. This is an example of an incomplete break, which could cause a disqualification. As you can see, the top of the can is broke, but the bottom is not. This is an example of a complete break, where the entire can is split in half. Once you have completed your cut, you throw your hand up in order to stop the time.